Want to know if B&G Foods as a company should hold in your portfolio? Well, stick around to find out. I fight to live, I fight to strive. One day I'll have what I want in life. How's it going? My name is Exo, and in today's video, we'll be analysing B&G Foods. Stick around to see if it's worth being in your portfolio. So the first thing we need to do when we look at a company is know what the company does as we cannot invest in something we don't understand. So we need to know how it makes its money, how it's diversified in its segments, etc, etc. So looking at the description, we can see that B&G Foods manufactures, sells and distributes a variety of frozen foods and household products in the United States, Canada and Puerto Rico. The company's products include, I found a list of 24 products, not sure if they have more, we can go on their website in a minute to see what the brands are. I'll show you that in a minute. So we can see frozen and canned vegetables, oatmeal and other hot cereals, uh, fruit spreads, canned meats and beans, bagel chips, spice, seasonings, hot sauce, wine vinegars, maple syrups, molasses, salad dressings, pizza crusts, Mexican style sauces, dry soups, taco shells and kits, salsas, pickles, peppers, tomato based products, baking powder and soda, cornstarch, cookies and cream and nut clusters and other specialty products. So. I'll put that on the screen so you can see as well. The company also sells and markets um, household products under the Static um, Guard brand. The company was formerly known as B&G Foods Holdings Corp and changed its name to B&G Foods in October 2004. The B&G Foods was founded in 1822. So now we'll head over to the website and have a look there before we then get on to the financials of the company. So as we can see from a seven day return, we've got 1.8% versus the US food of 1.7%, so let's beat that. And then the US market of 1.3%, so let's beat that. The one year return has beaten the US food by quite a substantial amount. And the US market um, is beating that just by a little amount, but still good to be the uh, US market. So the return versus industry and market has been better. If we look at shareholder returns, we've included dividends as, like I said, this has a stupid dividend yield, which makes it um, a big factor in this calculation. So we can see from the past five years, without a dividend, this company has suffered with a minus 7.9%, but with dividend, it has gone 28.6%. So that just shows you how powerful that dividend is. And again, you can see the industry was at 10% and then 28.2% with the dividend and then if we look at year three we can see the 31.9% and then the 66.9% with the dividend and again with year one a 61.8% and a 73% with dividends included so the past one and three years have been good for this company the past five years have not been 2020 like I said was very good for this company because of the pandemic now you can go and read these um, things in your own time. I have looked at this one in particular with the uh, intrinsic value of this. I find Simply Wallstra has a pretty good way of analysing. They do a two-step method of a discounted cash flow, um, which I think is gives just more uh, reliability than the single way of doing it. So now we're on to the valuation here. And we can see that its current price of $30 and with a fair value estimated at $48, we can see that this company is very undervalued, which makes it nice. And if this company had really good fundamentals, I'd be buying the shit out of this company. But as you'll see, there are some things that I, for myself, with my risk tolerances, do not like the look of. You might be different. Um, there are a few things this company could do that would make me then be like, yes, I believe in this company. But that remains to be seen. So it's trading below fair value more than 20%. Excellent. Now we'll look at the price to earnings ratio, which is better than the industry and the market. And that's the blue line there. So we can see that's good. And then the price to earnings growth is bad. However, this is with growth and BNG foods has not had any sort of growth to be honest that's the main problem with this company's growth um, revenue growth earnings growth that kind of thing so this was bound to be bad 
So for me, typically, I don't care too much about um, these kind of things. I'm more concerned with this valuation rather than the price to book. Um, but I am looking for growth, a certain amount of growth. Not anything ridiculous, but enough to sustain a consistent dividend and support its debt and whatnot. So we can move down to this. There we go, just froze her. So we can see here we have a lot of X's. This is where it starts to get a bit dodgy. So it's a 5.7% forecast annual earnings growth. And then we can see down here, we can see with forecast annual earnings growth, this is a lot lower than the industry and a lot lower than the market. Forecast annual revenue growth is even worse, being 0 0.8 versus 3 and then not 9.3. So we can see earnings versus saving rate. A 5.7% is above inflation, uh, not by a high amount, but it's still, <laughs> at least it's better than just sitting in the bank. And then it's forecast to grow slower than the market. Um, they're, they're forecast to grow, but not significantly. And then revenue versus market is bad and high growth uh, revenue is bad. So that's when it starts to get a problem now with the growth. The future return on equity says inf insufficient data. So past performance. If you did have this company um, a while ago, it would have been a good investment to have. But now not so much as I'll show you why. You can see one reason with the growth. but So historically it's had 6.3% historical annual growth. That's high quality earnings and the current net profit margins of 6.7 are higher than the last year of 4.6%. That was a good thing that I saw. Um, that gave me a bit of hope for this company. The past five year annual earnings growth was better than industry. A little bit low market but nothing bad. And then the last one year earnings growth of the company was stupidly high due to the pandemic. Um, and then everything else took quite a big hit. The earnings have grown by 6.3% uh, per year over the past five years, and the earnings growth over the past year was very high, like I said, and again, being the industry. It says the return on equity here is considered low, um, with the company here, of the blue line, and then the dark blue being the industry. So it's better than the industry, but not by much. So return on assets, again, that is better than the industry and with the return on capital employed only being it by 0.1 so nothing to look at there so in terms of the industry this is doing better um, by them standards I haven't analysed many stocks within the industry though apart from the ones I mean I guess so the short term assets do not um, cover the liabilities short term but do not cover the liabilities long term and I'm nowhere near covering that the long-term assets just about cover their long-term liabilities, so it has a bit of a debt problem. So as you can see it says it succeeds, but not by much. And it says short-term assets do not cover long-term asset uh, liabilities. Well, you can see that from the graph. So. You can see here with debt level, the debt-to-equity ratio of 280.6% is considered high. Um, this was a promising thing that I saw, though it did reduce from 374.5% to 280.6% over the past five years. So it is trying to manage that. But you'll see with its free cash flow that I'm going to show you, it is in the bin with free cash flow, with how much it has to pay out on dividends. Well, it doesn't have to, it just won't cut it or anything. So the debt is not well covered by operating cash flow, 12.1%. And the interest payments on its debts are not well covered by its EBIT of 2.9 coverage. We'll ignore that because we'll look at that in a minute. So you'll see here with the dividend where all the money's going. With a stupid 6.32% uh, current dividend yield. So it's higher than anything really. It's even predicted to go to 6.4 in 3 years. So you can see it pays uh, high than the bottom 25 of dividend pairs and in the top 25% of dividend pairs. Well, you'd hope so with a dividend that high. We can turn on these graphs here. So you can see the dividend per share has consistently gone up through the years. 
and now we're sitting up here so hopefully I would say I would normally be like oh can you increase the dividend because that's what you'd want but with this kind of company where it is now that's the last thing they want to do they will be in ruins if they do that the dividend and yield just fluctuates with the share price so so as a stable dividend over the past 10 years which is nice and the dividend payments have increased over the past 10 years which is nice now we get into some problem <laughs> see this payout ratio for some companies that have a lot of cash flow isn't a problem for this company it does not have enough cash flow to sustain this which is why it says future payments shareholders would be three which would be better but even then i don't think that would do too much in the way of how problematic its cash flow is it just doesn't have the consistent revenue the growth to sustain its current dividend to all its shareholders if it did manage to drop this and um, manage to pay off some of its debts increase its cash flow then i would be much more interested in this business we can look at the ownership and the shareholders if they've been diluted that's an important aspect to look at as you can see that the general public so that's me or you um hold 19.2 percent of the company most of it's ran by institutions and then you can see down here blackrock vanguard blah 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 so yeah all right so i have it on here my this is like my spread not spreadsheet word document where i analyze every stock i have in my portfolio this is what these videos are about to help me so here we go the free cash flow per share of this company is uh, two dollars and six p or whatever it is in america i'm uk so these weird currencies to me but the dividend is now um one dollar ninety per share so you have literally no room to reinvest that money or do anything really with that money it's, that is just no that's the most important word in business is cash flow so when i saw this this was a massive red flag and i was not happy about this <laughs> it says eight percent of all households have a bng product and i was watching the ceo talk about the recent uh, news and they did say they will never cut their dividend they're very committed to paying that dividend but it just it's just gonna lose um interest really i think it is okay to hold this company i wouldn't put a load of money in this company i would just literally have it as a small portion of your portfolio if you're going to have it currently i have it as one percent i might just get rid of it and reallocate that capital somewhere else i'm still deciding on that i kind of want to see where it goes um through the these parts next few years the ceo said with the pandemic um people going back outside now if the transition back into restaurants is slower then there's they'll still profit a bit more and then that capital could be used very effectively to make this company look a bit more uh profitable and whatnot but then as soon as that dies down everyone's back out of restaurants this company's still left with a problem so for me it's a still doesn't really solve the issue it's just putting a plaster over the wound basically okay so now we'll head over to the financial statements the income statement the cash flow and the balance sheet and then we'll take a look at all them numbers we will then just wrap up the video with a quick conclusion of my opinion about this company and then you can make up your mind whether you want to put it into your portfolio or not Okay, so now we've came over to the income statement on B and G Foods. We're in the annual period of the minute, and then up here it says in millions of USD except per share items. So just remember, all these are in millions. So we can see data all the way back to 2016, which should be more than enough for what we're trying to do here. So the first line to look at is revenue, and we can see the revenue increased from 2016 to 2017, had a little decrease um, increase in 2018 and then decrease in 2019 and then another increase in um, 2020-2021 due to the pandemic I'm not sure where 2020 is in this um, scenario it's just all gone which is really strange but like I said before the pandemic was good for this company so the revenues were expected to be higher here we have no other revenues so we can ignore total revenues 
gross profit we can have a look at. So you can see we had an increase, um, then a decrease, and decrease again, and then of course the increase due to the pandemic. So these um, drops here is like a worrying trend. So with this company, with its um, current plan of just trying to sell products when people aren't going to restaurants, it's not going to work in my opinion. They need to change something. If they change into more like health conscious foods maybe, that seems to be a shift that's happening recently, so that could be an option for them. They said they are like doubling down some of their major brands, because um, they've got like 50 products, but some of them aren't as widely used, so they're getting rid of that. We can look at operating income as well. So we can see we've had a decrease and decrease, a decrease, and then an increase there. So again, another worrying sign throughout. Uh, final thing on this page is to look at net income. Um, as you know, there's another one we can look at. But net income, you can see we have an increase, decrease, and decrease. And then a little increase there. So to drop down to all the way to here was not a good sign. The fundamentals of these companies are not very good in my opinion. We can look at the payout ratio as well and the dividend per share. We have a payout ratio. We've seen it fluctuate quite dramatically throughout the years. And then it was harsh down here in 2019. But then it had a, due to the increase in revenue, managed to drop it down to 92. If this year didn't happen, then I would expect this to even increase, to be honest. So again, seeing this was nice this little decrease there but then this steady increase mostly is not a good sign for me either the dividend per share it's been good that it has increased throughout the years but i think it's just increased to a point where i can't sustain it so if it increases any more beyond this point i don't think this company will even be able to survive because we can see with the earnings per share if you look on the normalized diluted earnings per share and you go to the current year 2021 it's literally matching and then throughout it's very close to the dividend so any money it's getting in it's literally just paying most of it out for a dividend you can lose you can look at and the basic at eps as well and all that be still not you got 2.06 here and then you're paying out 1.90 of that so you've literally got no money or capital to employ anywhere else it can't manage its debt very well it won't be able to expand any business lines so it'll just stay stagnant so as you can see not the best so we'll look over the balance sheet now okay on the balance sheet again we're in annual and then in millions so we can see we'll just go to current assets um, and total assets so if we scroll down a little bit more there you go we can see current assets there and then total assets down here so we can see from current assets they have been increasing we had a decrease there and then an increase increase so the current assets aren't increasing at a very fast rate and then it also had this drop there we can look at total assets to get a better picture um, so we can see we've had an increase, decrease, increase, and another increase. So it's not growing its assets that fast. It's just hovering around 3,000 range. Um, ideally, you want to see that growing a bit more, but when it's paying all this money out, I'm not sure how it's supposed to do that. So you can see the total liabilities here and the total current liabilities. So current, you can see it's had a little tiny decrease there and the bigger big increase um another decrease there and then another increase there so the liabilities keep fluctuating quite a lot but again taking total liabilities in that takes in account long-term debt and stuff like that so we can see that its total liabilities has increased a uh, nice decrease there increase and increase there to a record high if we then we can see that the assets are outweighing the liabilities there. Is that the case in every year? Yep. 
Okay. So the assets do outweigh the total liabilities, which is one good thing. When we take a look at um, total debt, we can see that the debt has been increasing. Um, they have not really been reducing debt year after year. So again, that's not good when they have no money to pay out in debt uh, for their debt even. So we'll take a look at cash flow now and then we'll get on with the conclusion. Okay, so now we're on the cash statement. We can see the net change in cash here. And you can see this company holds basically fuck all in cash. So we had we had nice cash from 2017 to 2018. That was a bit bit better there. But then without the rest of the years, it's just not been very good with cash on the side. So they won't be able to use any of this money to pay down their debts. The free cash flow per share. The free cash flow per share um, has been very low in 2017-2019 looking better in 2016, 2018 and 2021. So this free cash flow per share is actually um, looks all right for sustaining the dividend of £1.90, but when you look at the other things, it does not lead that way. So that's why you need to look at the broad scale and not just focus on one thing. Okay, so now I've been through all the financials of the company. We're just going to do a quick conclusion of who this company might work for and what I think. So, to be honest, I don't see much going for this company. Um, as you've seen for other video, I've not been very positive about this company. If you're an older person and need a high dividend yield, then this company could be one to consider. I'd probably think there are better ones out there though, but the 6% dividend yield is very alluring. And that's pretty much the only reason I have it at this point by what? I'm yeah I'm just gonna get rid of it I keep saying maybe but I'm just gonna do it because I do not really have trust in this company just need to start listening to myself a bit more if you're someone like me who's like 21 uh, 20 years old you can then use that time and use dividend uh, growth so Apple Microsoft they're better for that they have enough earnings to support that they're much better companies in my opinion B&G Foods is counting on the lockdown and people eating at home but if the USA is anything like the UK, we've been told we can go outside and eat. And you cannot get anywhere unless you book a table. It's ridiculous. Everyone is just going outside. Everyone's been cooped up. They do not care anymore. The product line of BNG Foods. Why there's uh, 50 different um, things there. It's still not anything revolutionary. They're just going to be like staples like tick over thing. Uh, Green Giant and stuff like that. If they could maybe move over to the more health conscious side of things or sort of more renewable foods uh, that seems to be where the money's going in the minute in that t um, sector so that could be a thing this company could do that would increase its earnings and would be beneficial for this company so it's got a good valuation going for it good dividend yield going for it but other than that i have no faith in this company to be honest so i'm just going to bin it off reallocate my capital somewhere else um, again, this is not financial advice, any of this video, I'm just telling you what I would be doing and just the financials of the company really, you can make your own mind up from this. There might be things I've missed, probably, I'm a new investor, so I can only do what I think is right for myself anyway. It all comes down to your risk tolerance and your timeline really, that's the most important one when it comes to the dividend investing. I hope you enjoy this video, my name is Exo, if you enjoy this content like comment subscribe all that good stuff any suggestions of stocks you want to do in the uh, comment greatly appreciated if you have a portfolio um, or any stocks that you're looking at you want me to look at then just give me a comment and i'll go to it do my best but again i'm still new myself so i can do something but don't expect any james <laughs> warren buffett out of me if you want to see more Obviously this channel, EXO, and then there's EXO Gaming, which I'm, if I get enough like people like viewing or not, I'm probably going to do like live streams because then if you have a live question about stock, I can answer it right there and then, as long as I have knowledge about that, obviously, because these things take time to analyze and whatnot, but I can help you out as much as I can on a live stream, um, if that'd be beneficial to you a lot, so I'll do that. 
and then exo diving and um, that's more my extreme sports page so i've got motocross that i want to do on there there's mostly just scuba diving on there at a the minute um as that's the one that i've easiest access to at the minute um all right so hope you enjoyed and i'll catch you in the next one peace out